It's my favorite rye. My favorite rye. Come on, guys. You guys know when you get a bottle, you're really happy about it. You just you, you sing to it a little bit. <laughs> What's up, everyone? I am Jason C. And today, we got the 2021 Michter's Barrel Proof Rye. Yes, their first barrel strength rye whiskey in two years. This has always been one of my favorites. Uh, so let's see if two years off made the wait worth it here on the Mash and Drum. Michter's US1 Barrel Strength Rye Whiskey came out for the first time in May 2015. Now Michter's is pretty unique because their whiskeys entered the barrel at a lower proof, 103 to be exact, means they already proof down their spirit with water before it enters the barrel. The theory is as the barrels mature, they generally increase in proof and in the case of their Barrel Strength Rye, no water is added so the final product is supposed to be richer, smoother, and a more full-bodied whiskey after maturation. Barrel entry proof is a pretty unique thing. Historically, the entry proof has changed a lot over the years. At the end of the 19th century, glass bottles became affordable to distillers and they started bottling their own product. Now in the early 1830s, whiskey was sold by the distiller in the barrel. So that means consumers would purchase the whiskey from the liquor store and would bring their own flask, jug, or bottle to fill it up. Now, since this was straight out of the cask, the distillers wanted a whiskey that was considered easy to drink, so they filled their barrels with whiskey that was generally 100 to 103 proof. As you may or may not know, proof can go up or down with aging so that the buyer was getting whiskey somewhere between 95 and 105 proof. Now, this higher concentration of water meant that the natural sugars in the oak staves dissolved quicker into the whiskey, making it sweeter. Prohibition comes along, ends consumers being able to purchase their bourbon directly from the barrel, but with repeal came increased regulations for bourbon. Now in 1962, the barrel entry proof was increased to the 125 proof that we see today. Now this was done to save on the number of barrels needed to age whiskey and to lighten the flavor of the end result. Now with the craft distilling boom, we saw a shift back to lower entry proof for whiskey. Now it costs more because you're gonna need a lot more barrels since you're front loading all your whiskey with water. But given that you know more sugar dissolves into the whiskey, you get a much more fuller flavor with a younger whiskey, which is really what the craft distilleries really needed. Today, new whiskey is normally 130 to 140 proof when it comes out of distillation, but you have to add water to it before it goes into the barrels. By law, the proof cannot be higher than 125 when entering the barrel. Now, several manufacturers go up to that 125 limit, but there's a growing number of barrels that are being filled with a lower proof these days. Now, Maker's Mark puts their distillate in at 110 proof, which is why their cast strength bourbon comes out between 108 to 115 proof usually. Peerless distills their rye to 132 proof, barrels it at 107, and then bottles it at barrel strength with no added water at the end. Now, folks wondered why Peerless was putting out such great product at only two to three years old. As it turns out, a lower entry proof seems to produce better whiskey, but it is also more expensive, like I mentioned. Adding more water in the beginning means that you need to add much less water in the end, if any, and you therefore have more of the original distillate left in the bottle to taste. So Michter's uses a very low entry proof of 103, uh, and I think that contributes a little bit to their higher price tags. The Michter's lineup includes their bourbons, their ryes, their sour mash whiskey, the vanilla bomb American whiskey. Right now, all of the Michter's bottles are being allocated because demand right now is exceeding supply. All right, so enough about all that nerdy entry proof stuff. Let's uh, let's get into the whiskey here. I'm gonna pour this. Oh, that, that was about 15 glug glug glugs. So for the first time since April 2019, Michter's US1 Single Barrel Barrel Strength Rye is back for 2021. It's bottled at 110.3 proof and sells with a suggested retail price of 100 bucks for a 750 milliliter bottle, which unfortunately is a price increase from the last release that I saw that was only at 80 bucks. Now this is chill filter, non-H stated, may not be much over four years old. Remember, they're using a lower entry proof maybe to get more flavor out of something that's a little younger. But if I had to guess, I wouldn't think that this is more than six years old. Again, the 2021 has allocated availability as of March. 
So I was really excited to hear that this came back. You guys have heard me talk about this one. I love this rye whiskey. It's so damn good. It's sweet. It's like candy, a little bit of that mint spice there. They do vary uh, depending on what barrel you have, but let's go in for a nose, see what we get here, guys. Oh, so glad it's back. <laughs> oh, it smells like cherry bubble gum on the nose. There's a big like thump of caramel here. Again, I, you know, this is a, this is more of a Kentucky rye. You're not going to get a lot of rye spice here. It's a lot of sweetness that comes out of these barrels and out of the, the Michter's uh, rye. There's a little bit of a fresh cut wood note here. I'm actually picking up a, like a light strawberry note on here, which is interesting for a rye whiskey. There is a slight mintiness to it, but you're getting more sweet on the nose than, you know, than, uh, than like those typical rye notes that you usually get. This would fool me a little bit on the nose, like thinking this is more of a bourbon than a rye. It's, it's that sweet. All right, let's go for a sip. Here we go, guys. Oh, here comes the rye spice. It's there. Wow, tons of cinnamon. Get a really nice oak presence too, but it's very sweet oak. Oh, on the back end, there's all the rye spice. It's just living. It's living and kicking, kicking you right in the uh, right in the back of the palate. Getting all the mint, the black pepper, a lot of um, I don't know. Is that like a like a spear, like a like a spearmint, like candy, like a spearmint tic tac or something? It's very refreshing. <laughs> Go for another sip. The one thing that sticks out about the Michter's Barrel Proof uh, Rise are the viscosity of it. It's very thick and rich. You wouldn't think so being only around 110 proof. It is very syrupy, it's sweet. Get a nice, like that caramel, a little molasses there. Again, a little bit more of that red fruit on the palate as well. It's very front loaded with sweetness up front in the front of the palate. The, the spice and those, uh, those mint characteristics don't really hit until the very finish. Let's go for another sip. I just got a huge punch of like vanilla extract right on the mid palate and it's kind of mixing with that caramel strawberry. It's very desserty, especially on the front mid palate. That's good. The, the best thing about this too is that finish, you get all the mint, you get all the, like the spearmint, almost like a peppermint type note. Uh, I don't know, whatever mint you may think it, it, it could be. I think it's more of a spearmint that I'm getting. Um, and it kind of just lingers there. It gives you like this, almost like this refreshing, type of lingering uh, like feeling on the back end of the palate, but it's really not any alcohol burn. There's really no burn here. It's all just sweet and flavor and, and mintiness. Damn, that's good. Let's go for another sip here. Okay, the more sips you take, the more rye it becomes. I think in the beginning, when you take those first couple sips, you're really kind of taken back on how sweet it is. Uh, and it is very sweet. But then as this, as you just keep sipping on it, the rye flavors start coming a little bit more to the forefront, but you're still left with a lot of the caramel, the vanilla extract that that spearmint note is still there. Hint of citrus comes out, just kind of peeks out a little bit, a little bit of a citrus note, but it's really kind of enveloped by all like this sweet caramel, dark red fruit. That vanilla extract punch is still there, but now the mint is kind of overlaying it now more, you know, from throughout the whole experience. All right, one last sip here. It's just such a delicious, well-balanced rye. I love it. If you like a Kentucky rye, if you guys like that Kentucky rye profile, where it's a little bit sweeter, um, but there's still some of that rye spice hanging on to keep it interesting, to keep it a little bit different than like your typical bourbon profile. I mean, this, this has it in spades. Now it's not as if you like a really spicy rye, this probably isn't gonna do it for you. Um, again, unfortunately this is allocated, but I have a couple of options that if you can't find this, which I highly recommend, you could definitely go to instead. All right guys, so as, as much as I love this Michter's Barrel Proof Fry, and I do, I love it, but as I mentioned, unfortunately it's allocated, it's a little bit hard to get for the new release, but if you see this for a hundred bucks, um, I, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a definite pickup for me. I love this stuff. It's one of my favorite go-to rye whiskeys. This is just a nice sweet sipper, 
just such great balance. All those uh, those sweet flavors mixed with the rye characteristics that really come through as it opens up and as you sip along. It really hasn't changed. Uh, you know, you know. Again, a couple of the bottles, depending on what barrel you get, could be a little bit sweeter. But if you can't find this, there are two really great options you can go to. Uh, this is the Pikesville Rye from Heaven Hill. Now this is right the same proof point, looking at 110 proof, but this actually has an age statement right on the bottle, right on the back says, this whiskey is aged at least six years old. Uh, so that's awesome and that's something you don't get from Mictors, you don't get the age statement. This is a classic Maryland style rye that was brought back to Heaven Hill and now they make it in Kentucky. Uh, and then you have my, uh, my my good buddy here, the Russell's Reserve uh, Rye. Now you don't think of Wild Turkey so much as a you know a, a big powerhouse in rye, but with their release of Cornerstone and Master's Keep, the rare breed rye, this one is one of those that's always available on the shelf. This is Russell's Reserve single barrel. This is non-chill filtered uh, and 104 proof. So really great rye options and cheaper than the Michter. So the Pikesville comes in around 50 bucks. And the Russell Reserve Rye, you'll see anywhere from about, I think, 50, 55, 60 bucks as well. So, really great options. Let's try the Pikesville. I haven't had it in a little while, so. Yeah, the, the Pikesville to me is way more like baking spicy on the nose. A lot more cinnamon and like some, you have like the savory and the sweet on the nose. A little more of the rye punches through uh, than I was getting on the Michters. Yeah, the Michters is like pure candy. It's crazy how sweet the mixture is and so damn good. But this Pikesville, you do get that sweet. You get a little bit of that spice as well. Get some oak char. There's a little bit of a smoke to it. Let's go for a sip of the Pikesville. So the Pikesville is not as sweet as the Michter's, but there's a lot more rye spice, I think. This is has a little bit more of, of some traditional like rye spices. This is way more on the side of the citrus and the orange like candied orange peels sprinkled with black pepper, mint, and real, those like spearminty flavors. Let's go to the Russell's. Yeah, now the Russell's has a little bit more, I think Russell's more is like on the side of like a cream sickle. It's very vanilla, very orange, some vanilla there too. You get the rye spice, but it's pretty light. I feel like it's probably the lightest out of the three. Let's go for a sip of this one. Mmm. The non-chill filtration really gives us a nice mouthfeel to it. Again, on the side of the Kentucky rye, this one is way more, it's, it's more sweet, a little bit of savory, some rye kick on the very end, but it drinks, I mean, this is 100 and 104 proof and it drinks like a 90 proofer. It is so easy going down. The spice is there, the mintiness is there. One more sip of the Russells. The flavor of this, the non-chill filtration, the orange, I mean, if you love orange and, you know, like, if you, like, grew up with, like, cream sickles and that are, like, orange sherbet, I feel like that's what you get with the Russells, all dusted with mint, spearmint, and spice. Um, the Pikesville, I think, is a good, like, in-between. It's more of a classic rye, a little bit more rounded in flavor because of that, you know, being at least six years old. But more of those rye spices come through, whereas the Michter's is just an absolute sweet candy bomb. If you can't find this Michter's, the Pikesville and the Russell's Reserve Single Barrel Rye are all amazing options for the money if you're looking to get into a sweeter rye category. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this review for the brand new 2021 Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. It is back, and I'm glad it is, and I'm glad I got a bottle because it's absolutely delicious. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments if you've had this before, if you heard it's back for 2021, you're looking to find one, and if you got one already, what are your thoughts? And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers. And uh, glad to be back, Mictor's Barrel Strength Rye. Take care, everybody. See you next time on The Mass and Drum.